El machetamiento por fusarium, fusarium wilt, o tropical race 4, es una enfermedad de disease causada por un soil born fungus known as Fusarium oxysporum, forma especialis cubense. La cubense special form groups a series of Fusarium oxysporum isolates that are capable of affecting the plant family Musaceae. That is, everything we know as bananas, plantain, and cooking bananas. Why is tropical race 4 important? It is important because many of the varieties that are resistant to race 1 and race 2 succumb to tropical race 4. That is, they are susceptible to tropical race 4. This includes Cavendish bananas, which are the ones we use for export. Let's recall that in the 50s, the Cavendish were introduced to replace the Gros Michel type varieties that are susceptible to race 1. Cavendish bananas have been very resistant to race 1 for many years, in which they have been produced on commercial farms in Costa Rica and different parts of the world. However, this variant of the pathogen that appeared in Asia is capable of breaking the resistance of the Cavendish and therefore represents a serious threat to the production and economy of the countries where Cavendish bananas are extremely important. Fusarium oxysporum forma special cubense. Fusarium oxysporum special form cubense is a soil-borne pathogen which can survive for up to 30 years. And how does it manage to survive all the time on the ground? Well, it produces resistance structures known as chlamydospores. These structures are capable to resist for a long time in the soil, even in the absence of a crop. Fusarium oxysporum special form cubense, FOC as it is known, reproduces by macro and micro conidia. Macro and micro conidia are very important structures of infection within the plant and for pathogen dispersal. Fusarium wilt has two pathologies. The main pathology is what gives the name to the disease, wilting, precisely, and the pathogen that is in the soil enters through the roots and vascularly invades the entire plant. It blocks the vascular tissue and the plant begins to show certain pathologies characteristic of this. By obstructing the vascular tissues, the translocation of water and nutrients to the upper part of the plant is affected. The leaves begin to lose their rigidity, they become chlorotic, and they bend and subsequently they become necrotic. The oldest leaves the lowest leaves of the plant are the first to manifest the symptoms and finally the youngest leaves. The plant bends its leaves and forms around it a kind of skirt. The leaves appear folded, chlorotic, and the plant subsequently dies. Most plants die before or at the time of flowering, which means that a plant affected by Fusarium oxysporum cubensim will not produce a bunch. Hence the importance of this disease and because it moves vascularly, all suckers that come from that plant will also be infected. There is another pathology that is also important that we recognize. It is known as growth distortion or progressive death. Many plants will not show wilting, but rather they will manifest symptoms of distortion in their growth. For example, bulging of the pseudostem, cracks in the pseudostem, and deformations of the younger leaves, which can be confused with other types of symptoms or other diseases. In these cases, they are also symptoms of the fusarium, and the difference is that the plant lives for a longer time. It can be up to several months, three to four months, and it is also an infectious period that is, the fungus is inside them, it is reproducing and it is able to spread easily. In addition, it is more difficult to detect plants with these pathologies. It requires more knowledge and experience. However, it is important that we know that these two pathologies exist, can occur, and may vary with the prevailing climatic conditions and with the banana variety affected. As well, as the plant manifesting in external symptoms, of course, it also manifests certain internal symptoms that are important to differentiate. The recognition of these symptoms is key when differentiating it with other diseases that cause similar pathologies. Internally, 
when you cut a banana plant affected by tropical race 4, you will find that these colored vascular tissues, they become light brown to reddish brown, almost black. The pathogen is in these vascular tissues, and the structures of the pathogen are surviving. They are very characteristic, and it is important to recognize them because an analysis of internal symptoms complements the diagnosis. Also, when the diagnosis is carried out in the laboratory, either by isolation or molecular techniques, internal tissue is used to correctly isolate the pathogen. Recognizing internal symptoms also allows samples to be taken in the correct way for subsequent diagnosis in the laboratory. That is a key factor in the process of identifying a disease or determining whether a pathogen is present or not. The ability of this pathogen to survive for so long on the ground is what makes it a very serious threat to the production of bananas around the world. For soils that are contaminated with this pathogen, we still don't have a method to clean them. The amount of inoculum in it can be reduced through certain cultural practices, but there is no way for completely getting rid of it. What does this mean? That once a soil is contaminated, as I mentioned before, we can hardly replant varieties that are susceptible to the pathogen. The fungus spreads in many different ways. The main form of dissemination has been by planting suckers. Asexual propagation is the form by which it has spread throughout many regions. Many times, farmers take suckers from a diseased plant without knowing that it is infected. Plant it elsewhere or sell it to other farmers, and in that way the pathogen is spread very efficient. But there are also other effective forms of dispersion. For example, contaminated soil that can be dragged in the footwear of people visiting affected plantations, as well as machinery that enters plantations and then moves to other farms, or any type of tool that can drag soil, even in small quantities. Large amounts of soil are not required for this pathogen to spread. In addition to that, water Macro and microconidia can be dispersed very efficiently with water, be it rainwater, splashes, surface runoff, or even bodies of water such as rivers or streams. If contaminated material goes to the rivers or streams, it will disperse it over great distance, where it finds a susceptible host, there it will establish and quite possibly a new epidemic will begin. Animals can also aid pathogen spread, including insects such as the black banana weevil, pests that affect the banana corm, which has been shown in particular studies that these insects can carry reproductive structures, conidia in their exoskeleton and thus aid dispersion within the plantation. Also, domestic animals that can enter the plantations such as pigs, sheep, goats, chickens, and any type of animal that can drag soil or particles of plant material in their bodies can perfectly spread the disease. Weeds are also part of the ecology of this disease. They function as alternate hosts in the absence of crops. The fungus can stay there and help its survival for a long time. There are weeds that are better hosts than others. All of that is important to recognize within management of a prevention campaign. Undoubtedly, the tools used for cultural practices can be very efficient ways of transmitting diseases. Tools such as machete, shovels, and any type of tool that is used to cut plant tissue or to work in the soil of bee plantations can perfectly spread the disease in an efficient way. That is why cultural practices of this type must be taken into account in phytosanitary campaigns. There are ways in which we can prevent the spread of this pathogen through preventive measures. In farms with banana and plantain growers, a full prevention training campaign has been carried out. We have explained to the farmers, technicians, and professionals linked to the banana industry in Costa Rica and elsewhere in the world on the basic prevention measures that we take 
and effectively implement in order to avoid the spread of a disease like this. Measures include the use of clean clothes, the use of disinfectants during cultivation practices, the establishment of food baths on farm for the disinfection of boots, and even the disinfection of vehicles entering the plantation. It is also important to note that it is not any type of disinfectant that we have to use. The reproduction structures of Fusarium oxysporum forma specialis cubense are very resistant to certain types of disinfectants, especially chlamydospores. We have carried out a series of investigations in Costa Rica and other parts of the world, identifying the most effective products. Basically, quaternary ammonium, iodophore type products, and glutaraldehyde. It is the key to know the correct dose to use. Through Corbana and the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock, especially the State Phytosanitary Service, we have developed a whole national information campaign of the different sectors. The idea is that all people help us contribute to this prevention campaign. It is very important to tell farmers not to underestimate this risk. The disease is not present in the region and sometimes we tend to underestimate it because we believe it is far away. The distance has been reduced. Nowadays, international trade is extremely active and we cannot stop international trade, but we can take measures to prevent the entry of such dangerous diseases as these. If you notice any suspicious plant, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate in communicating with the right people. Those people are in Corbana, they are in the State Phytosanitary Service, and we can gladly answer any questions. In addition to that, any questions you may have, please consult with the right people. We have the best will to collaborate in this prevention campaign and keep us as a region where Tropical Race 4 is absent as long as possible.